Hi guys, day 27, I believe, of the challenge. And I'm wrapping up the night with my nightly reading of The Wealthy Gardener. Before I share this with you guys, I wanna talk about my workouts real quick. So got both of my workouts done today and one of my secrets of consistently working out for the last four, four and a half years now has been having a really good workout buddy who has turned into one of my best friends. So her and I have been working out for, yeah, about four years, I want to say together. And that has been a tool that has kept me so consistent. And it's really nice to have somebody who you can do that with, um, who you can be flexible with and work with each other's schedules and keep each other accountable. And the last month and a half, she had surgery, so I haven't been able to work out with her. And today was our first day back into our routine. And it was absolutely amazing. So if you are looking for a tip on how to get yourself into the gym or just implement whatever form of activity into your life, I would definitely recommend finding someone that you can do it with you. And for both of us, I mean, we both work full time. She has kids and a family and we're both very family oriented people. We have friends, you know, we just lead normal lives. And no matter what, we always make time to get the gym in throughout the day, whether that's 5 a.m., 6 a.m. or 7, 8, 9 p.m. at night, one way or another, with whatever we have going on with work or family, we make it happen. Um, so it's really nice to have somebody who can dedicate themselves with you and it keeps you accountable. So that is the tip for working out consistently that I would recommend. And on that note, let's go to lesson 4.13, which is called ambition. So in the previous lesson, he had described sort of the five traits of your individuality. And to just recap that, number one was values. And values was finding your work based on the values that you sort of believe in. And not values in terms of, you know, you believe in being a good person or being nice to other people, not like that, but values in terms of what you find fulfilling from work. Um, number two was inclination. So that's stuff that you would naturally sort of gravitate towards too. And you want to bring a lot of awareness to that so that you're recognizing what those things are. Number three, which we went over yesterday, was knacks. So it's something that makes you unlike anyone else, um, something that you're better at than most people, kind of like a talent, um, which is not so obvious for many people, including me. I am one of those people where my whole life I've always believed that I've had no talent um, or I never really knew what it was until I brought some awareness to that. And then today, number four is going to be ambition. Tomorrow, number five is inner voice. So let's go over ambition again, some really good stuff. And if you haven't got yourself a copy of The Wealthy Gardener, like I always say, I think it's one of the best books that no one knows about and so you definitely got to get it um, I think originally this was self-published by the author John Seferic um, so maybe that's why there wasn't so much marketing done on it but I think since then he was picked up by Random House I could be wrong about that but I think he was um, picked up I wonder if it says here but Anyways, regardless, you should get this book. The link is in my description. I'm just trying to see. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so let's go over ambition. Ambition, he defines as, ambition for wealth is a natural tendency towards security and personal freedom. It is personal drive, desire, determination, and motivation. It is the will to work hard, sometimes even an inability to not work hard for a personal dream or aspiration. Ambition is a stubborn resolve to strive against opposition and adversity, and it's an inborn beast that begs to be unleashed. And so he's talking to sort of one of his mentees, and this is a young kid who started a business at a young age, dropped out of college, postponed going to school so that he could start a business, and he ended up being very successful. So he posed a question, and his question was, was prosperity worth it? And this is what the wealthy gardener responded. 
All I can tell you for sure, I said, is that an ambitious life is not always the happiest life, but it's a satisfying life, and satisfaction to me is better than happiness. If you have true ambition, I said, you're pretty much screwed anyways. You won't be happy doing nothing, sitting on a beach, or ignoring your ambition. You're driven, like it or not, to achieve things. And then, um, so they kind of go back and forth in conversation. And then, uh, let me go to the next page. Oh, yeah. So here we are. So then he goes on to say, Satis satisfaction and personal growth are the yield of ambition. You can thank your inborn ambition when you feel frustrated by life conditions, trapped by circumstances, and unable to endure mediocrity. Your distress is the fuel to achieve your best life. You'll rise due to ambition. In adulthood, I saw ambition as a beast that I'd rather, that I better learn to ride, not suppress. If I was to ever have peace, ambition simply gives us no choice. It will not be tamed or bottled up without unsettling symptoms. I can't read. <laughs> Ambition is not something we try to have. It's something we can't not escape or ignore. People who are, un are unable to motivate themselves must be content with mediocrity, no matter how impressive their other talents, said Andrew Carnegie. The artist is nothing without the gift, but the gift is nothing without work. The fruit of ambition is work satisfaction. The life lesson, ambition. I came to see my ambition as a beast of burden and wrote it like a bull to reach my financial ends. And that is the conclusion to lesson 4.13, which is about ambition. And once again, Wealthy Gardener by John Sparrick. End of day 27, I believe, of the 75 day challenge. If you want to know what that's all about, check out the description down below. And that is it for me for tonight. All right, guys, good night. Talk to you tomorrow.